Well, I really am the dark side, huh? <laughs> Matt, we both have impeccable looks this week. I feel like you should stand up just so we can... Let's actually do like a full situation. vibe review. <laughs> really strong. Well, time to be, maybe not the bearers of bad news, but um, the vessels through which you all can process the bad news of recent times. Yeah, sometimes you just gotta commiserate with, <laughs> in your uh, own little echo tunnels. Is that one of your earrings that you've You're been commenting making? on my little pair of dime yeah. earrings. <laughs> <laughs> what is it? It's a, it's a dime. A dime. Yeah. Okay. FDR, baby. <laughs> That's the good one who did a lot of so socialism. Yeah, he did a socialism <laughs> on the US. <laughs> he pulled a socialism. Yeah, we have kind of a mishmash of topics to go over this week. So we just felt like so much happened. Uh, we just wanted to dive in a little bit to all of it. So we're gonna be unpacking with you all. So for starters, uh, you know who has been just all over the news this week for all the worst reasons. Uh, you may have guessed BYU, but no, not this time. Turns out there are other schools who have the same quest to embarrass themselves out of existence in the next 10 years uh, that are trying seemingly just as hard as BYU, which is impressive. <laughs> Southern Utah University. That's the one. Jeffrey are is they the, speaking. <laughs> are they the ones who just changed their name from Dixie State, or is that Dixie State? What is, what's the thing with Dixie? Because the Dixie oh. chicks changed their name too. Dixie is like the nickname of all the Confederate states. Mm. So, um, which is weird that like, uh, it's an area in Utah, right, right. which was not really not. part of the Confederacy, though favorable to it, legalized slavery. Don't let it be said <laughs> that they were for abolishing slavery. Yeah, so them calling themselves Dixie State was always like, hmm. Interesting, and they just changed it. But we digress. Anyway, SUU uh, invited Jeffrey R. Holland. So SUU object like a secular university, right? They don't claim to be LD. They don't claim to support Mormonism in any way, or right? Surely have a lot of members of the church in their ranks in the student right. body. There's no doubt about it. Um, but yeah, a state-run university, a secular school. And it's not entirely uncommon for a school to invite like a famous religious figure, but it is. In 2023, in 2023, know like enough not to. Yeah, it's like okay, this guy's just a Mormon, and not just like a Mormon, but like one who has recently um, used the the phrase "wanting to hear more musket fire." Aimed at the LGBTQ community. AKA, we need to be less tolerant of the gays. And uh, the the comment section for the SUU post Aww. about this was just a heyday. Um, instantly, there was a petition up, which was signed by over ten thousand people. Let's check where I think. the petitions at. And then a counter uh, petition that was, you know, showing support for Holland speaking at SUU that only had like a few hundred. Okay, it was, all the difference was really funny <laughs> this is not the right one. Oh, that's the that's the one that keep one that oh, only that had a few like <laughs> <laughs> so in the comment section um of course i'm i'm pouring through and uh Brave, by the way. <laughs> and people are like oh he, he's not it's not just because he's people hate him because he's just a mormon like he's also a uh, a great scholar and uh, a leader in education. Yes, his poetry is why they brought him there. <laughs> I mean, his his dissertation was on Mark Twain, the writer who famously said that the Book of Mormon, what that like ether was aptly named because it will put you to sleep. Mm. Uh, oh, what is this other stuff it's about like, the Book of Mormon? Hope he likes you, bro. Cause... Yeah, was just like constantly talking about how silly the Book of Mormon was. <laughs> Whoa. At 25,000 signatures, this petition becomes one of the top signed on change.org. Wow. I wonder, I wonder so what already 16,233. 16, and it's ticking while we watch <laughs> it. I should sign it, shouldn't I? Yeah, I mean, you're here. So, uh, you know, a lot of people were also saying, like, you, uh, the queer people are overreacting. This isn't a big issue. He was just saying we have to defend the faith. That's not a big deal. And it's like, you're telling me that a trained rhetoric 
rhetorician. Nice. Rhetorician. You sound like a rhetorician. I'm not a rhetorician. <laughs> uh, you know, a person trained in the art of language, shall we say, uh, is like intentionally adopting a gun metaphor to describe... Um, being directed at a community that is the regular victim of gun violence and then and then to say like oh you know we hurt for you so much gay people we know exactly what you're going through and we have some scars too don't you know don't let anyone tell you this is a one-way fight and it's like from what from literally what from trying to make gay marriage illegal for like 10 years straight for pouring millions of dollars into that effort like you haven't been hurt at all no one's trying to make being mormon illegal it's just a really stupid move for the university and obviously like the people at the top are probably mormon and that's why they didn't see that it was an issue but it's like obviously there are non-mormon students so that alone i feel like should you know, unless they're kind of a religious leader who, for whatever reason, has, has like some mass appeal. Mm. I mean, I don't think even then. I still it's not Desmond Tutu yeah, I was showing say. up. <laughs> it's I'm like, like but, Eckhart Tolle is walking in. <laughs> but Jeffrey Holland doesn't have any like larger appeal. Uh, yeah. When they invite those kinds of people, like the Dalai Lama, it's it's those people who are like stage six of the Fowler stages of yeah. faith, who have like transcended yeah. their individual Eight sect, or one, <laughs> <laughs> and who are like have embraced a more uh, spiritual or uh, universal application mm-hmm. for their spirituality. They have a much yeah. bigger paradigm than their own than their own group. Yeah. And it's- Holland doesn't do that. His whole thing is like, be a Mormon, and if you leave, I'm going to throw a tantrum and pull my tap oh, and shake so my free. jowls in disgust. Truly. Well, if he does do the commencement speech, which I wonder what will happen there, because I could see them... I could see them wanting to, like, keep... If they've already decided it, I could see them wanting to stick to their guns, sorry for mm. the metaphor, and just, keep, and just have them there, because it will look too weak to... To cancel him. Yeah, I mean, they made a post saying that they're going to have, like, a, a meeting and a conversation to discuss and evaluate. Ten bucks says they just yeah, stick because with it. I, yeah, I could also just... Like, Jeffrey R. Holland, first of all, it would put them out of favor with the church if they back down. Which, which is... Which I don't think they can handle. <laughs> yeah, it's not like... Yeah, definitely a much bigger... Has much more influence mm. than queer students who expect to have a safe, encouraging Uh experience on their own secular campus. Like, there's a reason a lot of these students chose to attend SUU over a church school. Do you think there's an amount of signatures where... Like, do you think the number of signatures is really going to be a factor in whether Um, it it happens? Maybe. It, It at least shows some, you know, solidarity and community resolve. Um, can I share the Matt Easton tweet? Yes, I love when Matt Easton tweets. <laughs> um, this is great because, as you know, during the com- you, the, the, mu- the infamous musket speech, Elder Holland specifically called out Matt Easton, who was a gay valedictorian who came out so over the stand during his commencement speech in a way that was totally approved beforehand by the faculty and staff in charge of the event. Um, it had to go through several, like... Uh, Reviews and it, they all passed. Which and Jeffrey didn't like any of that, right? And That's Jeffrey didn't like it. He mm-hmm. was he was pissed and he was like, "How dare someone commandeer a pulpit to talk about their sexuality? What Which, next? Will people talk about their private lives and their interests and their families?" And it's like, well, again, Jeffrey O'Hold is someone who is supposed to be trained in the art of language, and. And he's analyzed, I don't know, he just seems like someone who should understand symbolism and, like, the symbolic (laughs) impact of someone coming. It's not really about Matt coming out. It's bigger than that. And I I feel like that's so obvious. Yes. Also, uh, I feel like we shouldn't even have to say this, but so the sort of Mormon uh, line of criticism they have for various videos we've made about this is, oh, he was just a metaphor. Like, obviously, he's not actually calling on people to, like, shoot gay people. But number one, yeah, he's, he's... trained in literature or whatever and he's like deliberately choosing to use that metaphor and it's insensitive but then yeah. also a gun metaphor what could that possibly uh, mean what would that compare to what would that represent uh-huh. <laughs> but then also someone who is a leader of a so-called global church should be aware that there are just always going to be a percentage of the population that don't really grasp metaphor or who are like mentally unstable enough that they're going to take something like that and run with it in a different, you know, you've got to be like aware when you have that much power and influence over people's minds, you've got to be aware of the ways it could be taken and that a certain percentage of people 
all going to take it that way. Like, say, maybe the family of the Colorado shooter who is yeah. Mormon and whose uh, dad got on there and was like, oh, uh, when I found out he shot up a nightclub, I was like, oh, good, at least he's not gay because we're Mormon and we don't do gay. And then people will comment on our video <laughs> saying he wasn't active and it's like he, his psyche was forged in the fire of Mormonism. Like, his, he clearly got his homophobic views from his dad who got them from the church. Like, it's, it shouldn't be brain science here. Like, you don't have to be active to have, you know, tons of conditioning left over from your childhood in a high demand religion. Yeah. It's so silly. Here's uh, Matt Easton. He said, hey, um, hey, Elder Holland, looks like it's your turn to give a graduation speech. Make sure not to mention anything about your faith, family, or personal <laughs> convictions. Wouldn't want you to commandeer the podium for all, from all those graduates who worked so hard to get Gorgeous. there. <laughs> Gorgeous. <laughs> yeah, oh, you get to be a valedictorian by having the exact same experience as everybody else. So don't mention the things that set you apart mm -hmm. that may have uh, compounded the difficulty of your situation. Situation that made your rise all the more impressive. <laughs> because I think what makes a good speech is not using any personal details or anything <laughs> exactly. that can be relatable from human to human. It's just to keep it completely clinical and sterile, and, and that's what makes a compelling speech. And to regurgitate the church's mission statement. Yeah. Oh, it's like when they commandeer funerals to get mm -hmm. all preachy about the plan of salvation. Yeah. So distressing. Um, Just talking to someone the other day, and they, one of their uh, relatives was buried in their temple clothes, even though he didn't believe at all. Grim. Yeah. Um, so, so the comment section had a heyday. Yeah, comment section. Here's um, Brattle20 saying... Um, this is a Mormon defending. This is, yeah. Okay. It's pretty disheartening to see some of the responses on here to Ellen, Elder Holland being selected. It probably is disheartening. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. It's, it's disheartening <laughs> to be told that more musket fire needs to be aimed at your community. Sometimes we just got to grow up. Yeah, I mean, there was a bunch of people who were like, I can't believe all the hate in the comment section. And it's literally being like, this guy doesn't like us. And I'm like, I don't see anyone saying there needs to be more musket fire at the Mormons. Yeah. Like, how would you be reacting to that situation when you just react to someone being like, I don't think so. Mm -hmm. Like, um, okay, so uh, it's bothersome how in our society today, we all talk about not discriminating and treating others with respect, and yet members of the Church of Jesus Christ of Latter-day Saints are the most persecuted group in our country and in so many <laughs> other places around the world. Wow, yeah. In Norway, no one will join or see them as legitimate. Yeah. <laughs> so hard. <laughs> I mean the pers the persecution complex the most persecuted among is Mormons is absolutely unhinged. Uh, to be like to compare yourself to groups like the queer community uh, who are seeing actual legislation making them uh, you know attempts to legally delegitimize and disenfranchise them, disappearing them out of public life. Like, that's what persecution looks like, state-sanctioned persecution. Having someone say, I don't want you to come to my graduation when you have said that you want me to be openly persecuted, that's not get you're not getting persecuted for that. <laughs> like, also, I feel like a lot of people... It's reverse persecution. <laughs> Which is actually worse than regular persecution. Liter that's what people literally. Um, yeah, I, I feel like a lot of people with homophobic ideologies... In their minds, they're like LGBTQ plus people. They wouldn't say it like that. <laughs> uh, it's, uh, because they see so many public displays of support, you know, like corporations even support them during Pride Month. And because from their perspective, people are always talking about how we need to support LGBTQ people. In their minds, that means that, like, they're not being persecuted anymore. Because, uh, like, look, Target supports them. <laughs> so they can't possibly be. And they because Target is supporting them, that is an attack on me, showing yes. that Target is not just so not supporting I'm me, but attacking persecuted me. being persecuted here, and they are being... My homophobia is not being celebrated <laughs> by Target. Therefore, is Target is up. hurting me. Which is fricked up. <laughs> fricked up. <laughs> Mm, so I feel like it's going to happen and I can't wait to see what he says. Yeah. Uh, some other guy got on there and was like, uh, the, the rainbow, the Skittles, uh, commune or whatever the mm. pejorative that they use, uh, 
who's like, it's all just a bunch of mentally ill people who want the world to conform to them. And I was like, oh, oh we're, we're the mentally ill ones. Like, which one of us believes that they are in contact with an immortal polygamist living near a star called Kolob, and that if I learn the right secret handshakes and wear magic underwear, he'll take me away and give me real estate in heaven. Which one of us, Greg? <laughs> and I realized that was like an extremely snarky thing to say. And in you another context, I wouldn't be the first person to like go in guns blazing like that. But like... To just dismiss gay people or queer people or trans people or whatever um, as mentally ill while being totally oblivious to your own personal insanity, like, sorry. And it's like, our whole society is mentally ill, honestly. It's like, just fundamentally not conducive to good mental health, so we're probably all a little bit mentally ill to one degree or another. Been thinking a lot about Eckhart Tolle, who would do great at SUU. He would crush <laughs> it SUU at SUU. needs him. <laughs> Let's start that <laughs> Yeah, get Eckhart Tolle. Because uh, just realizing, like, re we Eckhart's truly like, do... Your, de your degrees mean nothing. <laughs> you can't be here now. It is just a paper. <laughs> <laughs> All this money and for what? <laughs> <laughs> I think I could do a good yeah, talk. I, I, <laughs> I, I can feel that you're breath, on the yeah. <laughs> uh, But just thinking about how we really do, like, people think, I mean, traditionally, like, um, in the last 300 years or however long the industrial age has happened, that, like, animals are a completely different thing than humans. God, you know, created the animals and then created a whole different thing. And it's like, actually, animals are just like that. And our neural circuits are just like uh, variations uh, on the same kind of thing. You know, mm -hmm. we all, our genetic tree all comes back to the same trunk, these branches. And that's why I think religious people are so threatened by evolution, because then it, it weakens their idea that they're somehow superior. Totally. And what you realize is like, it's obvious to anybody who watches an animal for any prolonged amount of time that they experience all the same things we do. Mm -hmm. They feel anger. They feel jealousy. They feel love. They feel apathy. They feel depression. Mm -hmm. They feel like all of it. They just don't have words to like, uh, conceptualize any of it. Mm -hmm. And so like their experience is just as real as ours, but so much of what we consider living experience is all through mental constructs, which isn't what reality really is. And yet it's like how everything in modern human society mm -hmm. is operating on all in these mental constructs and how it gives such an a distorted view of what life really and consciousness really is and about and we get so siphoned into these like weird mental constructs from uh you know antiquated institutions and you know just like weird traditions that have passed down that we just like inherit as reality and never question and how we just i need to be more <laughs> present and so more <laughs> so yeah. I obviously right now need to step out of lingual constructs and just Honestly, take a moment of silence shall we I need like, to be cut so off <laughs> unfortunate that our job is to say things because I'm like what I need is to just really remove myself from language <laughs> from <laughs> and from communication <laughs> with anything but you know I isn't just Source. going on a walk outside the best goddamn really, thing yeah. you can do. Yeah. <laughs> I went to touch grass the other day. It was covered in snow. <laughs> um, yeah, I mean, it feels like the whole of society is like pretty removed from the fact that we are animals, but then high control groups like Mormonism, where there's a superiority complex even o over other members of our species, it's just like that on steroids. Yeehaw! Who but loves eat it? Eat meat sparingly. <laughs> From now on, it's silent sermons only from us. We're going to log on, we're going to sit here quietly, and the enlightened ones will get it, and then we'll donate on Patreon. Slow blinks so they know we're not a threat. thinker. Yeah, that'll really and get yet. you not thinking. <laughs> <laughs> there was a viral clip going around about Bethany Mendel, a oh. columnist for Deseret News. You should uh, definitely in, put uh, the clip The in. news branch of the LDS Church. Do you want to put the clip in here? We'll put the clip right in here. Ah! Would you mind defining woke? Because it's come up a couple times that I just want to make sure we're on the same page. 
So, I mean, woke is sort of the idea that um, I, this is going to be one of those moments that goes viral. I mean, woke is something that's very hard to define and we've spent an entire chapter defining it. It is sort of the understanding that we need to re -to totally reimagine and re re redo society in order to create hierarchies of oppression. Um, sorry, I, it's it's hard to explain in a 15 second soundbite. Well, yeah, look, it, time. and that was and the clip. <laughs> <laughs> what you guys think? Uh, so it's always so funny asking, um, a person to explain what woke means and then waiting mm -hmm. for them to say something not racist because mm -hmm. they can't. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and especially, uh, usually they'll say something to that effect, but you know, uh, this person was obviously be being interviewed by a person of color and completely fumbled it. And she wrote a book on woke. Okay, <laughs> like, like, yeah, she, yeah. she didn't even have her elevator pitch ready for like, what is wokeism? <laughs> what is woke? And then she goes into Who's like... Who's her publisher? It's about creating hierarchies of oppression and it's like, no, 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 no. It's about observing <laughs> the hierarchies of oppression that already exist. And the way she said, exists. it's people that think we need to... You know, just ra I can't remember exactly what she said, but like radically transform the system or like scrap the system and start over. And I'm like, I feel like everyone sort of feels that. To some degree. <laughs> yeah. and like even the Republicans are like, the system sucks. You yeah, know? we need to go back to the Ten Commandments and George Washington. Yeah. Um, oh, I'm so embarrassed for her. I really had secondhand embarrassment watching that. That little bit at the end where she's. I don't remember the exact wording. We didn't watch it just now, obviously. We only threw it in. Uh, but when she was like, take your time or whatever. Yeah. <laughs> I loved that reporter. There's nothing more satisfying than a good professional reporter who calls people on their shit. And keeping up with tradition of all people who get canceled by the woke mob, now Twitter is going through all their tweets and being like, people aren't getting canceled for nothing. People are being like, hey, you shouldn't talk like this about other human beings. So, uh, you know, they're... Everyone's been posting her uh, her tweets. Here's something she said about Palestinians. Oh, good. <laughs> Not nuking these fucking animals is the only restraint I expect, and that's only because the cloud would hurt Israelis. So yeah, just you know, a columnist at the Church News saying I'm getting canceled by the woke mob when her Twitter is literally full of this so shit. So I'm like, tell me you've been brainwashed by America without telling me. I'm, all these people that will be like. Her son's name is Altima. He's literally <laughs> named after a car. Like, not just any car, like a shitty car. I drove an Altima in college. <laughs> mm. I'm gonna name my son Prius. It's kind of a ball on me. It's a beautiful name for a yeah. baby NB. <laughs> <laughs> um, ready for more Mormon news? <laughs> so, of course, uh, we're seeing in the world a, a rise in mm. anti-drag, anti-trans le legislation, as an attempt to scapegoat queer people as the problem in the world, the people who are coming after your children, groomers and pedophiles who are just lying in wait to ruin your child, your son, your daughter, caught in the arms of an animal instinct, mass hysteria. But unfortunately, the data just doesn't back up any of those conservative claims. Happens. Turns out every single day I wake up to a new headline about some pastor, some Catholic priest, some Mormon bishop who has been caught uh, abusing a child. And that was the case to a couple days ago with former LDS bishopric counselor and Idaho city councilman. Mm -hmm. Often too funny how uh, mm -hmm. funny how often mm -hmm. the political and religious thing yeah. goes together. And it's always people that are taking political stances that uh, just feel suspiciously in line with their own dysfunction. Yeah, it's like lowering the age of consent mm -hmm. of child marriage of... Mm -hmm. Um, trying to make sure that religions don't have to be, don't have to report uh, sexual abuse, etc., etc. Or even et cetera, et aggressively pretending to care so much about protecting children while doing the exact opposite. So yeah, Byron Wiscombe, 45, sentenced to prison after molesting girl for seven years, groomed her during Mormon worthiness interviews. Mm. Once again, not a gay man, not a trans person, not a drag queen, a Mormon politician. Also quite hard to groom a child at a drag reading where the parent's there and it's just <laughs> like a, literally a bookshop on a Saturday <laughs> afternoon. A worthiness interview, on the other hand, much more conducive to being able to get away with that. 
And I want to I want to say I, I wish that were the only headline similar to that today, but uh, yeah. there's no, been other ones as well, lies. and it's kind of a lot to talk about. So I'll just let that one be as it is. Um, but just weird the world that we're living in, the projection that's going on, and that like tightening the grip of authoritarian conservative forces and people who are like you know the average person who is not a predator but who is trapped in these systems of mm-hmm. belief is has been totally conditioned to not be able to identify the problems the call coming from inside the house yeah the cleansing of the inner vis- vessel is not a practice most of us are trained in doing mm-hmm. it's all about being like oh it's all the other people creating the problems and if you're saying you know i'm sure mormon would be like well then how come that doesn't apply to you and it's like well, it does, because I and Samantha, we changed our opinions when we saw the problem. Like, that's why we're here and not in there. And yeah. I think and that... And we are... There's not really a system that we, uh, you know, would sacrifice our morals to defend, you know? Like, if some, right. if Bernie Sanders is found guilty of child abuse, then that's it. Like, I'm not going st- <laughs> hey, to double down <laughs> yeah. and be like, no, he's a victim of a woke mo- you know it's uh, unless there's like legitimate reason to believe it's fabricated but you know what i mean it's uh, like it's just yeah because our perceived identity doesn't hinge on bernie sanders being a good guy or not being a child predator so if we found out that he does well that really sucks but at the end of the day it doesn't like affect our perceived identity or our sense of safety and whatever in this world like the solution to uh you know there being a lot of child predators and child abuse is not doubling down in puritanical views of sex and and people within puritanical religions think that they think like oh well we ban sex so there's no way that anyone would act out in dysfunctional ways yeah (laughs) we made it so that it's illegal for uh girls to talk about menstruation before 12 years old like literally that's on conservative like states are trying to push that right now sorry they're trying to push it so that it's illegal to talk to girls about menstruation before like right. a certain age limit, because that's about? like a sexual thing, and you don't want that. Don't want them knowing. And that's again, this is what we're talking about: is like the conservative mindset that is like, oh, if we just forbid anyone from talking or doing anything, anything about it, that'll protect people from danger. And all that does is disempower people from being able to recognize bad behavior and to do something about it Mm -hmm. and opens the door for the predators who are pulling the strings in political and religious power positions to make sure that they don't caught and that the systems benefit them. Mm -hmm. Uh, They're just now they're having a heyday with people who aren't allowed or supposed to talk about these kinds of things. Whereas if you could just inform people and uh, teach people about their bodies and feel comfortable allowing them to explore with the information that is of course age appropriate and but you um, need years to emotionally prepare for starting your period. Like you don't want to have that sprung on you one day. Oh, how you many? You seriously need so much time. I see comments all the time about uh, girls who got their period having Nine. no information about yeah. it beforehand, thinking they're dying, that something horrible is happening. In to them. England, they start giving. I think they start educating you on that at like eight or nine. Because you have to. Yeah. You, it's not fair to the like percentage that are going to start their periods really early. And also, what? what, what? Uh huh. It's all, it's just proving that you uh, it's proving that people with those mindsets sexualize kids too much because you're literally sexualizing a child getting her period for the first time. It's wild. <sighs> everything you repress will come out in more dysfunctional ways. The solution is not to just put everything behind more locked doors and pretend like you can just repress a normal healthy human experience. Is se- I sexuality is such a powerful force in just like all organic life. It's like a wellspring of joy and vitality and such an integral part of like the human experience. And that's why religions try to control it because if they can control that, they can control people. And I don't think it was fully intended for people to like be able to be strictly chaste. It's kind of built into the system for people to mess up because it's Mm -hmm. just a powerful thing that's always seeking connection. 
and then to put people into shame cycles so that they feel guilty and horrid and I've committed this sin next to the murder. I'm the worst possible creature that ever lived. And the only way I'm going to feel better about myself is if I'm giving money to this organization that can absolve me of my guilt. Mm -hmm. And it's like they're creating that problem. And then the shame is driving people to do uh, things that they like to act out their sexual energy because they can only act it out in the dark, so to speak. Right, right. Which makes and them who's the most do vulnerable much more risky activities. Yeah, either either just riskiness general, doing like getting into situations that like a healthy, sexually integrated adult like wouldn't do. Like poisoning your wife so that you can be with your mistress. Another story we need to cover today. Oh, I mean, it's God. all part of this. If you could just. If you could just reduce the shame around maybe you just want to leave your marriage or you found this sexual connection with someone else and you didn't go about it in the most ethical way, but like now you want to be like, if you could just remove all the shame <laughs> around that, like own, own the pieces, you know, the ways you, uh, you know, wronged your wife and stuff, but mm. that you don't need to murder someone, which is objectively way worse. Uh-huh. Again, because it always has to act out in the dark, it's being often gets channeled into uh, that pain and that shame and that guilt gets pushed onto more vulnerable, more helpless people, often yeah, children. who are going to be easier to manipulate and to, you know, get them to stay quiet. And then also a lot of people in puritanical groups, they are so juvenile sexually that that feels like it has to play into it too. So you, you make, you're making kids... Ugh, the whole, like, conservative approach to... To protecting children is completely backwards. Which is why conservative institutions are absolutely rife Mm -hmm. with sexual predators. And that's not like a bigoted statement. That's like data. (laughs) The data is saying that. Obviously it happens in in every like sort of realm, but the the, the data is stacked for sure. Yeah. And drag queens, typically people who have, or people who have sort of shed their shame around gender and sexuality and, you know, not conforming to these traditional puritanical ways of thinking, it seems likely that they would be a lot less likely to act out in ways, you know, like abusing children because they've reckoned with all that stuff. They've brought the unconscious into the light, so they don't need to. Mm -hmm. But if you haven't, yeah. So it's, it's very interesting how, like, drag queens have become, like, the symbolic figurehead of the protect children movement when it just represents the total delusion of like that whole worldview Ugh, grim 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 in somewhat good news the church has uh donated several like a thousand plus shares of water to the great salt lake water shares is it normal for a church to have (laughs) just checking very good question (laughs) Yeah, I mean, great. We sure, love yeah, a- they make you ask a lot of questions. <laughs> we love How did they get it? Who did they take it from? Uh-huh. Who was who had it first? <laughs> but, yep, I mean, it's nice when a PR move actually benefits something somewhere, you know, great. But I'm not, I'm not like, aggre- I'm not doing like an aggressive John DeLynn pat on the back to them because mm-hmm. it's like, why did you, why do you even deserve to like have such a disproportionate <laughs> share of a life, uh, life saving, not life saving, um, of a vital resource. <laughs> God, I cannot talk today. Well, they, they were just, I just read a study saying that like within the next 40, every, I mean, everybody who is observing water cycles right oh, now and water so usage much. is talking about how water is going to be the hot commodity in the next 40 years because it's just all getting siphoned into this like exponentially growing. I don't see how people can look at a world this like, enclosed Mm -hmm. biosphere with this much atmosphere keeping us safe and functioning and this much water that's sustaining us and just thinking we can keep just pumping gas into the sky and keep drinking all the water more and more critters all the time for more and more silly things and it'll just go on forever and of course it can't and the oil companies know that and the car companies know that but they literally don't care they're getting theirs right Mm -hmm. now while the going's hot it's Um, wild it's but yes, good to see that the church doing a PR stunt that actually helped people. And I do think it's good to point out the good where we find it. Because yeah, I never want to be the curmudgeon who can only find the negative. But of course, there is a sordid history behind all of that. And about, uh-huh. I mean, it's like, why why does a church need that? So they can have their pristine the lawns you... in the arid desert? Like... And they came and colonized this land. And then like suddenly <laughs> they own the water. And now yeah. we're in a crisis. And we're like, thank you so much yeah, for giving yeah. us some of the water. 
while the more... That you took... <laughs> that you, you, like, Mormons run this state. You are the reason the Great Salt Lake is drying up. So, like, thank you, but also... Also, I wish I knew enough about watersheds to know whether it's actually a significant number that's going to make any kind of... It is, like, a, it, a drop in the pond, but at least at least something. But I'm like, do they have any more they're holding on to? Maybe give some more. <laughs> now, in PR stunts that didn't help anybody, <laughs> Russell M. Nelson was an, a, awarded oh a... Oh, uh, the what is it? The Nelson Mandela Award. Um, Has Nelson Mandela is it he alive? No. I think okay. He's dead well, now. who signed off on that? That like who paid? They the ha- organization the church donated to to get the yeah. award, uh, which you can't find a record of the award having been given to anybody else. It's not like Mandela got it or Gandhi got it. And to compare Russell M. Nelson to either one of those people is like based on what? On literally what? He's literally done. Nothing like what? except say that being Mormon is a slur and announced a bunch of temples that aren't going to get built. Um, it's like I, I'm sure it just has come. I mean, the uh, what was it? The NAACP who said that you know the church had published this thing about how they were proud partners of the NAACP, and the NAACP released a statement that was like. Everything we've done with the church has been less than satisfactory. They haven't shown a great initiative to pursue or follow through with any, mm-hmm. any, any of their ideas, and the money they've given is kind of a pittance. Sorry, but the fact that it's the Gandhi King Mandela Peace Prize. <laughs> peace Prize! <laughs> <laughs> what has he done to deserve peace? Like, you should... If you're going to be named with any of those people, you should at least have to go to prison for fighting for equal rights for somebody at some point in your life, right? Right. Velvet chair. (laughs) And been and tried to like and tried to uh, ban the parents of gay kids from attending church. Like, oh yeah, we've got this great uh, social justice warrior over here, a great visionary for the downtrodden and outcast. I genuinely need to know, like, what reasoning is in it? It's also, feels telling that it's the first one, so maybe this is just a new money-making scheme. No, literally. Yeah. I'm, no, this is uh, the, uh, PR 101, and I got my degree in this, yeah. is creating an award for you. It's, it's to, so textbook. To try and encourage donations. Yeah, and, it, and to say, hey, look at our leader. He's getting... He's getting nominated. He's getting seen for the great work he's doing of building expensive uh, churches, uh, uh, temple buildings that people in third world countries, and then asking them to donate the gold from their teeth so they can build these things while he sits on hundreds of billions of dollars. To say that he's done anything to promote peace and positive social transformation is a fucking stretch. Because I feel like he's done more harm than good. But to say that he's the person most deserving of an award that... That goes to a person who promotes peace and positive social transformation through nonviolent means. Like the Dalai Lama is is, is sitting right there. Yeah, he's and right even there. He's <laughs> and even he's problematic. Yeah. But he is pro peace. Yeah. <laughs> um, so it says the board selected Nelson for his global efforts in abandoning attitudes and actions of prejudice against any group of God's children through nonviolent ways. It then quoted the Latter Day Saint leader's June 2020 Facebook post after the George Floyd killing by police, where he said, let me be clear, we are brothers and sisters, each of us the child of a loving father in heaven. Blah, blah, blah. It doesn't Black, say, like, white. defund the police. This is, kind of, no, this is kind of funny. He said, he quotes the scripture, invites us all to come unto him, black and white, bond and free, male and female. It's uh, like, okay, so you're only, like, promoting this, like, universal thing <laughs> so that they'll come to your church, you know? Right. And it's funny that somebody on Twitter, I wish I could remember your name, sorry I, that I can't, um posted that with a citation from Bruce R. McConkie, who after the 1978 revelation that finally said black people can be people, um, and after the following the civil rights movement, which the church actively opposed, um, Bruce R. McConkie cited that and said, this scripture has now taken on a new meaning. And then the person like captioned it was like, Wait, so what was the old meaning then? <laughs> and it's like, ooh, yeah, in context, that is kind of, uh, kind oh of telling. God. At the ceremony, the school will unveil an oil portrait of the last day <laughs> saint president to be hung alongside Abraham Lincoln in the chapel's Abraham prestigious Hall of Lincoln. Honor. No! This hall includes more than 150 paintings of international <laughs> leaders in civil and human rights. Oh, you can buy anything in this world with money. Sorry, this is the Tribune. They said, to Latter-day Saints, the award likely seems fitting for their top leader. I mean, yeah. Who has made weeding out racism one of the hallmarks of his first five years at the helm of the world religion. That is like such... Only if you're comparing it 
to just the horrific racism that exists for the majority. <laughs> like he's <laughs> and continues to exist among the rank and file and the general attitudes of the leadership. Like I really don't know any. Also, the people who fucking support <laughs> Russell M. Nelson the most reject the idea that we even need to weed out racism. So how has he done a good job? Of I, weeding right, out? the church has <laughs> such big all lives matter energy generally. <laughs> the people that like him don't think racism is a problem. He has not properly conveyed that to his adherents, nor changed their perspective in any way. It's oh, there it is. Just there it is. It's saying um, the church has dedicated millions of dollars to programs for black people in this country. I just have such a hard time with all of that when it kind of feels like with the water rights thing where it's like you, you've done so much damage to cause the problem and now we're giving you an award for doing less than the best, literally for just saying like, we're all brothers and sisters of Christ. And that's like weeding out racism that makes you worthy of a the Gandhi King Mandela Peace Prize? Oh yeah, I mean, it's like how they give uh, the Nobel Peace Prize to the commander in chief. It's, it's all... Uh, this is a, a, some leader of a support group for Black Latter-day Saints says, as the mantle of leadership settled upon his shoulders, President Nelson provided a steady, responsive hand, addressing racism directly in a way no previous church leader had. I mean, that might be true because, yeah, previously they addressed racism by doing racism. <laughs> but being like... he hasn't c- condemned any of the church's racist teachings. He doesn't... Nor apologized. He doesn't really have a spine. He's just like, we're all brothers and sisters of Christ, and we're like, oh, the anti-racism of it all. Meanwhile, the church's canonized standard works talk about how uh, the reason black people exist at all is because they're the descendants of murderers, Cain, who slew his brother and has now grown up to be Bigfoot. It feels like, given how many members of the church still buy into all that, like... Saying that none of that's actually true and apologizing for that should be the bare minimum. Bare minimum. First step, cleansing your vessel. If you're a pioneer of anti racism, <laughs> then you must at least be like, hey, that little scripture in our Book of Mormon that talks about how God cursed the Native Americans I with know. dark skin to make them unattractive to white people? Have the people who gave him this award got any awareness <laughs> of what this entire religion's foundational text is about? <laughs> Just a slap in the face to uh, people actually doing anti-racist work. (laughs) Just God, you can just be like this white guy born in a high control group who just rises up the ranks through obedience and, you know, by just being completely brainwashed. And then he can just say the most bare minimum things. That, like, everyone kind of thinks, except for, like, truly terrible... Like, everyone feels, like, a general sense of, like, we, we all deserve love, we're all the same. Like, I feel like that's pretty, like... I don't know. It's did, just grim. Did we talk on the show about the whole thing with his uh, his autobiography and asking Spencer W. Kimball to do the forward for it? But he wrote the forward for it, and it's really narcissistic. Did I, yeah, did we talk about that? Not on the channel, no. Oh, just, oh. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> so uh, someone on Reddit, again, so sorry that I can't remember people's names for citations right off the bat, but it was on Reddit, uh, posted a screen grab of um, Spencer W. Kim, uh, a few, like, Correspondences between Spencer W. Kimball and uh, President Rus- the then elder Russell M. Nelson. Nelson approached Kimball, uh, asking him to write the foreword for his autobiography. The catch? He had already written it for him, which, you know, maybe it's nice to have a ghostwriter and someone doesn't, and you're like, hey, I have a writing assignment for you to do for me. Maybe it's nice to just, you know, have that preemptively done nice and you can look over yourself. it and correct it. But the the <laughs> intro that he wrote was so self-aggrandizing that presumed to know Kimball's inner thoughts upon meeting Nelson and the admiration that he like, had for I was like, when I first met him. <laughs> yeah, literally. Like, <laughs> when I first saw Nelson, I was overcome with a spirit, with uh, such a I spiritual give glow. I that man and... a peace prize. Because <laughs> 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 um, And then... Uh, Kimball's son, who uh, uh, compiled all his notes and extensive journals and letters and did into his uh, biography, which was my like favorite book growing up. I read his biography so many times. He's such a banger. Um, <laughs> but uh, in, the, in the footnotes in compiling it, uh, Spencer W. Kimball's son wrote essentially like, what a prideful thing for a man to write about himself, like, exclamation point. <laughs> yeah. Because it was just, like, so dripping. Mm. 
Anyway, he's a surgeon. I don't know if that's relevant, he's but some, and I don't mean to, you know, stereotype everybody because I know that there's a difference of personality among everybody, but there Wait, are we're tendencies. We're all brothers and sisters <laughs> in Xenu. Bam, give us a peace prize. <laughs> just did it. Literally just did what he's done. Yeah. I don't have millions of dollars to give to a black organization uh, th- 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 because I haven't taken millions of dollars from people who have been <laughs> controlled through various uh, undue influence techniques. I don't have thousands to give to schools. I have billions for them all, but... <laughs> <laughs> haven't done enough colonizing to raise those kinds of funds, but I hope to one day. Exactly. I really believe. <laughs> so grim. It's a white supremacist organization. Like, the, the Liter- scriptures... Li- literally. The scriptures are white supremacists. Show, white supremacists. show a depiction of Heavenly Father being an Asian guy... And watch the uproar yeah. that will happen. Yeah. The catastrophic Even Jesus uproar being a little too dark. <laughs> yeah. Too close to He's what supposed he to be been. Scandinavian. <laughs> yeah, it's, that's just fucking absurd. I have nothing else to say. I'm just like keep <laughs> expecting to like latch onto this idea that's gonna do, it's just all ridiculous. Alright, I think that's enough Mormon that's news enough for news. me. <laughs> that's enough. Well enough thanks news. for watching the news, and yes, we are a news channel now. <laughs> Well, if you want to have a rip roaring good old fashioned time, come on over to the Patreon where we're reading Stephanie. It's Jack Whalen's best work so far, and I'd say our best work so far. Yeah, although we've got we've got big boots to fill after Adam and Sam. I will be honest. Speaking of Mormon news, we haven't even talked about AlphaCon. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Just finally getting sued for being an actual con, as descriptive Who described known? in the name. <laughs> Nobody knows. Yes. Watch our yeah. Betacon video. Um, we do, you don't have to support us on Patreon if that's not your thing, but we do rely on donations to be able to keep this channel going. And we also have a PayPal link you can donate through in the description box. And I have a Venmo that we use, so you have options. We just have merch, and it's cute. Get yourself a little bucket hat for spring, summer. Protect your skin from those UV rays, you're not getting any younger. All right, love you. That's the end.